Hello, I'm Daniela. In today's video, it's got a continuation of some previous videos. It's really an explanation. In a previous video, I showed you how I made paper mache birds, just my process for these two-dimensional birds, that I used as a centerpiece for a table, and I made lots of them. I painted them in different colors, each one bright and fun. It was the centerpiece for my father's birthday. In my members only video, I explained the process behind it and why he likes those. But for this video, I wanted to show you how I actually completed a painting of a bird. I'll take you through the steps from starting after it's all paper mache, where you can see that in a previous video, to the completed bird. You can use any color you like, it's just the process that I'm going to show you today with some beautiful colors. Not only do I color the bird in a solid color, and then I enhance it with little marks and little images, but you can change that around. You can use patterns and such. And I'll even show you my nephew's versions of these birds, how they took it and they made it their own, and they were adorable. I helped them along, creating actually the skeleton of the bird with cardboard and masking tape, and then we paper mache over it to give them a structure to paint on, and they went to town and had a great time. Their birds came out beautiful. They added text and things to make it very personal to them, because it was a gift to their grandfather as well. So let me show you the process. So here's a little more in-depth look at the completed birds. They're two-dimensional and they're two-sided. They're a little bit three-dimensional, but I think that's stretching it a little bit. But they do have a little bit of weight to them because of the cardboard that they're made out of. And I showed you that process in a previous video. I just love the way they came out for the application I needed. They were perfect, which was a table decoration. And they were very forgiving, so I could make them any size I wanted. I wanted a variety of sizes, so these are my two biggest little birds here, these colors, and I stuck with a color scheme just because that's what I wanted was a bright and cheerful color scheme. So I have all these different birds, different shapes, and again, they're all two-sided, and the majority of them are very brightly colored. So blues and greens. I did make a white and a black just to throw it in for variation, and I like the way that looked. It also followed a story that my father liked. Um, so that's why I have the colors and just the few of the non really non colored birds. But they're very rustic, very folk art, and they follow a basic premise. They're easy, they're lightweight, they're brightly colored, they have fun little elements to them, and they're cheerful. So that's where I was going with it. So I made a ton of these birds. 13 or 14 of them. And then when my nephews came, because we were making this as a centerpiece for a 77th birthday, and I wanted to have as many people involved with this as I could, they created their own. And they were eight and 11. So their skill level was really off the charts. It was really wonderful. And even their dad got into it. Let me show you what they created. So here are the two that the boys created. And here's a picture of them holding their creation. They're so proud with it and they did a beautiful job. They knew the purpose of the birds was a centerpiece for their grandfather Nono's table for his birthday celebration. And so one boy actually wrote down all the different places that we were, Florida, American, English, England for the language. And he made all these different elements to it, which were just beautiful. He went outside my color scheme, which was totally fine. I let him select any colors he wanted from the paints I had available, and then he just went to town. And his brother did the same thing. He chose red, and what was interesting about his bird, I showed him how I made it, is he put both wings on the same side. This was the older boy, and I think he had something in mind but I wasn't really sure what, something maybe got lost in translation, but he drew that wing and he emphasized this wing. You can see just slightly where the actual dimensional wing was put. I guess he had second thoughts after it was all paper mache but he did such a beautiful job with it. And the experience of creating this with him was really magical. While they were creating their final coat, with their little elements, their dad got in on the action and he took a bird that I had just primed with color and I had done this side and this side was waiting to be done and he cl completed it and it looked fantastic. So that was very exciting and it was a really nice family activity. All the birds have two 
bamboo skewers in them at different heights. As you can see here, the two heights, but there are many heights. I didn't measure that at all. I just stuck in two bamboo skewers in each bird. My husband created these 3D printed bases to put the birds on. And because they have six holes, three on each side, there was a lot of variation and the bamboo skewer had a little bit of give so I could stretch it to make it fit. And then it stood upright on the table. And here's how it looked on the table, just that plethora of birds. Now there's a lot of variation on this technique and you could alter the shape. It doesn't have to be birds. It doesn't have to be rounded. It doesn't have to be so folk arty, but that's up to you. Here's how I completed the process. I have just my work surface down. So there is a background here of just my painted paper that I use as the background. So it might be a little distracting, but it's not a big deal. I paper mache the cardboard and I added a coat of gesso, which is like a primer. It just prevents the text from coming through and I use less paint. I also like it because it seals everything together. It might fill in some gaps if there's a little loose edge or rough edge. And I have my 3D wing here. I already clipped the end of my legs to be short because I like that variation on the table instead of them all being uniform at one height. And I have a little piece of palette paper here, which I like because I can pour paint on it and just take the paint from it. I don't need a, an actual palette or a paper plate or a bottle cap, which I tend to use. But you can use whatever you want. Now for this project, I just use craft paints. They're ideal, they're inexpensive, and the colors are gorgeous. So I came up with a bunch of colors that I liked. I'm gonna use this turquoise one. Apple Barrel Atlantis is the actual color, but it's just a turquoise. And so I just paint that on. So now I don't even mix the color. I just go and I start painting and I'll paint the entire bird. Might do two coats. It really depends on what it needs. So what I like to do is paint one layer that looks pretty good all the way around. And this paint is very thick and you can see it's pulling up in places. So that's my cue to let it dry before I add another layer. And because I like to paint both sides, I just take a wax candle and stick those skewers right into the candle. And then I can paint the other side of the bird. So I'll do that, let it dry and come back. And we'll add our final elements. So now that my bird has dried on both sides, I'm ready to start just illustrating it. I like to use paint pens or I'll use acrylic paint as well. The paint pens are just neater. They dry quicker. Um, but depending on the colors I need, I might go to my stash of acrylic paint. So I like to just start by outlining the basic shapes here. On this one, I have one wing made three dimensional on this side and not on this side, but I'll just work on one side at a time until it's complete. So I like to just do a simple outline and I start by just dotting the shapes all around and then I'll just combine it. And this just helps me get a nice neat edge. So I've dotted around and I'll just gently combine those dots. I'm not worrying about perfection just yet. And then I can just go around it again and thicken that line. I think thick lines look nicer, particularly on items like this, this folk art thing. I love using the paint pens, particularly the acrylic paint pens, but the trouble I find is that they dry up. Some brands are better than others. So I'm definitely keeping my eye out for the brands that I like. It's a learning process. And sometimes if I don't use the paint pens frequently, that's when they dry out. So I'm quite happy with the way the colors look. I think they're nice and vibrant. And I have the beginning of my bird here. I also like to come around and make the beak. And if I don't have the right colors, that's when I'll dive into my acrylic paint but I'll create just the shape of the beak and then I'll get some orange paint for that. Take this much darker silver and work on the eye. It's kind of just easy for me to start these things. And then I can decide if I want to paint over it with black. And it's, again, it's just the simple little shapes. I like to make a little 
eyelash, something indicative of an eyelash there. And then I just choose my colors. Now I think I'm gonna to wanna to use some yellow and some white because I really like the way that looks up against the blue. But I'd like some pink as well. So I'll take some of this marker, maybe just add a rounded line here for the tail and I'll echo it with the shapes with the acrylic paint as well. And then maybe a necklace the same way here. So I create these dots and I can just go over them again, just making them a little larger. For inside the wing, I like to make just a few little abstract shapes. So I'll come around and divide this wing and then fill it in. And it's really just about playing with it seeing shapes within shapes. And if you don't see a shape, well then you just make a shape. So that's the beauty of the folk art look. It's very simple and really fun. And depending on the colors you use and how bright you make it, you can really change the dynamics. I'm gonna take a little of this darker blue. I don't seem to have very much here. So I'll just make a small little shape. I like the addition of different colors to my work. I just think that looks really nice. So that's pretty good. I'm gonna get my acrylic paints here, the yellow and the white. I think I'll get that darker blue as well so that I can enhance what I already have. So I have my colors here and I'll just start painting. Take my brush and I'll start with a little beak here. I like to turn this around just to make it easier. And I just paint the shape. Again, this is just a square that I'm trying to make it look like a beak. With the acrylic paint, I'll probably let it dry and paint a second coat, just because it'll stand out nicely. And it'll be a nice bright color up against that turquoise of the bird. I'll go across to the top as well, and then really fine tune that afterwards when I'm working on the back side after the front side is completely dry. And now I'll continue just with my shapes here. I'm gonna use the opposite end of my brush. This way I can get those nice dotted shapes. And I'll just continue with the dots. And depending on the paint and how thick it is, how old it is, I might have to dip it twice or dip it more frequently to get those shapes the way I want them. And I'll do around the neck here as well. This seems to be a popular shape that I've been making are these dots, these little necklace of dots on the neck and the tail. And now I'll just continue here. I took some of that blue. I'm gonna go over here and just really make that area really pop that I've already done the blue with a marking pen. The marking pen was kind of on its last limb. And again, these lines don't have to be perfectly straight. That's the beauty of the folk art. It's very forgiving. So here I think I'll do another row with the dark blue on the tail. I like how this kind of pulls it all together. And I'm not so much worried on the sides of this piece except for things like the beak, not worrying about dotting on the sides with these colors, although I certainly can. And now I wanna add a little white. I'll add a little white to the eye. And I'm gonna fill in here with white. So one thing I do wanna add is more yellow. I can see that looking at my bird here, the colors are great, they're nice and vibrant, but I still want a little more decor, a little more brightness to them. So I'll let these colors dry, but before I do, I'm gonna add a few little rows of these white dots, maybe two rows. I like how it thickens it and it makes it a little more alive. And now I can decide if I wanna add some dots on the wing, and I think I do. I'll take the white and just add some dots inside here.
I'll let this dry and then I'll come back and maybe add a second layer to the beak and see what's going on here. I might want to add a few more layers to the wing and the sides of the bird. So now that that layer has dried, I'm going to come in here, just add another layer of white just to make it a little neater. I'm not going to worry about the blue. It's not as neat as I'd like, but I think I'm going to add some yellow stripes to it. And that will break up the blue, incorporate that yellow that I like so much into the piece. I'm also going to add a layer of orange to that beak. Now one thing that I did on all the birds is I made a little bit of a cheek. And I just made it into a little teardrop shape. Just like this. This pen is, there's not much left, but I think I can get enough to complete this bird. And it's just a little bit of color there. So now I'm going to come in and just sharpen up any areas that I think need it. Making some of these dots a little rounder and filling in spaces. I'll take that yellow and add those little stripes that I wanted to add to the blue. Make sure I have enough paint. Then I can always come back and add another coat as well. And now looking at it, I want to add something to this white area. So I'm going to take some of this orange. I'm just going to add a little heart in the center. I could add more dots. I could add a series of hearts instead of dots. But it's this type of thing that makes it a little personal and a little different. Each of the birds have little emblems and symbols on them that make it a little different. But I'm repeating the shapes, the stripes, the hearts, the dots. I think I'll maybe add some more dots. And I'll go with the blue this time. I'll add it above and below the heart. So I'll let this dry and then I'll complete the other side. We'll come back and take a look at our bird. So that's my completed bird. I have the front side with the wing and the dots and the back side. So there's always something to look at because this is a centerpiece or even if I was making this as a hanging ornament, I'd want there to be sides that you can see on both front and back as opposed to something that maybe if I was hanging on a door where you wouldn't see the back of it, I wouldn't have to worry so much about it. But because I know it's going to be viewed from all angles, I wanted to make sure that I colored it on both sides. Now I'm going to add a coat of varnish to these. I just take a sponge, dip it in the varnish, and dip it all over the piece and let it dry. And I might do two coats of varnish. And that gives it a nice little shiny edge like here. So I like that a lot. I'm ready to stick it right in my little piece, varnish it, and then use it as I like. Just like that. So that's how I paint the paper mache birds. You can vary this process and create your own bird, or you can just completely follow along the way I did it. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. And please consider becoming a paid member of my channel. Thanks for joining me today.